So I noticed tonight, obviously, is the birth of Hazrat Matsuma alayhi salam, and she is not on that list. Does that mean that list is is only only the four on that list are the greatest, or are there other women within Islam who we can emulate to be more like or learn lessons from? Well, the religion of Islam has produced and has seen some of the greatest women you'll ever find in the history of humanity. Because you don't make it in the list of Ibrahim, Nuh, Musa, Isa, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa doesn't mean you're not a, a, a great prophet. Of course. Doesn't mean you weren't a Luqman of your time or a Talut. Mm. Talut is a king for his people. Luqman is a saint for his people in the sense of the wisdom that he has. Mm. Doesn't mean Asif bin Barkhiya, the Wasri of Sulaiman, was not a great person. He's bringing a, a throne of the Queen of Sheba next to you. Mm. But those four excel. But that's not to deny that there weren't great women in this religion who may not have made the list of that four. But believe you me, the amount of devotion they had towards their Lord is something impeccable. I remember Sheikh al-Saduq, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his soul, has a work, the Khisal, it's a renowned work. And, you know, within the Khisal, there are certain genres of literature where some chapters are, are, are named after numbers. So, you know, if, if, if a chapter is named after seven, it means the seven, the hadiths of seven. Mm. The seven, those who were the best in their patience are seven. Those who were... Uh, the following seven is what ensures you get into heaven. You know, so mm. there's a particular chapter in Saduq's Khisal. Ayatollah al-Khu'i, may Allah bless his soul, gives this narration a sahih isnad, extremely strong. Says that there are seven great women. Now, your hadith that you brought up said the greatest. The greatest. This hadith mentions seven great women. When this hadith mentions these seven great women, I don't think many of the speakers in our community have even discussed or given biographies of these seven. Many would have discussed Sayyidina Khadija alayhi salam. Many would have discussed, for example, Maryam alayhi salam. Many would have discussed Fatima Zahra alayhi salam. But I don't think many would have discussed, for example, Asma bint Umayyad. You see, I'm going to bring names of people Muslims will agree upon. I don't want to bring names of people some Muslims will revere, others will differ, mm. or people who cause headaches for every Muslim. So these seven Muslims, these seven great women, and notice something. Ahl al-Bayt, many times in their, in their traditions, whenever they give a piece of advice to their followers, they don't say, and the men of our nation should be like this. For example, Rahimallahu man ahya amrana, doesn't say, that Allah has placed mercy on the men who revive our affair. No. Rahim Allah, men. Men here could be men or women. Correct? Ahlul Bayt wanted to make clear for all of us that the women in our community and the men in our community, all of them, can achieve the highest of levels. Here in this tradition, Asma bint Umayyad is mentioned. Salama is mentioned. I ask you, Sayyid Jabir, Salama, who is she? Who is she the servant of... It's a good try. And I won't ask you a question again because it's unfair for me to put you in such a position. But let's say someone like Salama, the wife, let's say, for example, Salama, the wife of Hamza bin Abdul Muttalib. Oh, I'm thinking of Fizza, sorry. Say the Fidda is another great mm. woman. Even I remember in that list, Sheikh al Saduq mentions the mother of Khalid ibn al Walid as being seen as one of the Greatest woman. Yet no one has, for example, read her biography. Yes, Walid ibn al-Mughira is a nightmare. But his wife, that's an interesting discussion. Why have the Imams of Ahl al-Bayt mentioned? Asma bin Umayyad, we know. Salama, we know. Maymuna, we know. There's another lady who's mentioned by the name of Hamida. There's another lady from Banu Thaqif who is known as the wife of a man by the name of Hajjaj. Not necessarily Hajjaj bin Yusuf, but another of the Hajjaj. Now, these women, and another one is Um Fadl, the wife of Abbas, the uncle of Rasulullah Now, when you're seeing these great women being mentioned, when we're saying that the four greatest women are Asiya, Maryam, Khadija and Fatima, 
السلام, we're not discounting the other greats. Mm. We didn't mention Sayyidah Zainab Of course. We didn't mention Sayyidah Fidda as you rightly mentioned. We didn't mention Sumayya, mother of Ammar bin Yasin. We didn't mention Um Ayman, for example. There are others that we didn't mention, such as Sosan, such as Tuktam, Narjis. We haven't even mentioned, for example, the ladies of the 10th of Muharram. Mm. Daylam, the wife of Zuhair ibn al-Qayn. Layla, the wife of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. Um Ishaq, the daughter of Talha. All of these we haven't mentioned. Um, um al-Banin. Um al-Banin, the mother of Abel Fadl and his brother. So, I don't want to say that because we're mentioning these four, there weren't other greats. But like the Quran says, there were some messengers we made to excel above others. Likewise, there are some women who were made to excel above others in the eyes of Allah. <laughs>